What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with yet another quick Hackintosh tip for you. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit a DSDT for audio. Now I will say right off the bat that most people likely will not have to do this. If you have say for example a socket 1155 system, maybe it's you know a Z77 chipset, something like that, more than likely you can just come up and do uh, multi-beast here, go to the audio without a DSDT and say you have an 889. That will most likely work for you. However, on, there are some motherboards. I'm on a motherboard right now on the X79 chipset using a socket 2011 CPU, which has an ALC 898 chipset. Now, even if I come into MultiBeast here and select ALC 898, I will have audio options, but I will get no audio output. From the looks of it, it looks like it's working fine, but in reality, that is not the case. And since there's no X79 DSDTs on the Tony Mac database or really on the internet, with a few exceptions of a couple boards done by generous people, this is where this video comes into play because we actually need to edit a DSDT in order to get audio working. And now before getting started with this tutorial, I just want to say that this is based off of a guide from Tony Mac X86. Uh, this guy right here, how to add HDEF to your DSDT and how to get a DSDT if you don't have one. Excellent uh, post here, tons of great information in case you guys ever need to do this, which I assume you do if you're watching this video. Or maybe you just want to learn a few things. And so for this video, you will need a couple things, most of which can be found right on this page. You will need an interim 898 uh, HDA, but 8, 898 is relative. This could be whatever audio chipset your board has. It could be an 898, it could be an 892, you know, fill in the blank here. You need the actual text for that audio chipset. You'll also need this folder over here, add HDEF to DSDT. This provides some written instructions and some screenshots and stuff, as well as some pre, I guess, pre-done edits for you guys. And the last thing you'll need, other than some time and patience, is a little program called DSDTSE. And that's actually an application that looks a little bit like this. So with that out of the way, let's just go ahead and get started with the tutorial. The first thing you're going to want to do is extract your DSDT. So we're going to go ahead and we'll do that. Actually, I'll go ahead and I'll move this off to the side down over here. So here we have the DSDT from our system. It just came, you know, like I said, right from our system. And the first thing you want to do is save this. So we're going to come up here to File. We're going to save the .dsl and we're going to save that right to the desktop. So pretty self-explanatory as you can see here it is. Now what we want to do is come into the program and uh, what we're going to do is compile it just to be sure that everything's exactly how it should be before we even get started which I'm not sure why it wouldn't be but just to say we did we're going to compile this and it's going to recommend actually it's going to force us to save it in a specific location as you can see it tells you right here that's fine just go ahead and hit save hit save and right here you can see at the top here we have success if there's any kind of warnings, whatever or not, have you, there they are. And it actually opens up that directory right here. So there's the dsdt.dsl and there's the dsdt.aml, which is the final product we will be using. But of course, right now it's not edited at all. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and close out of this window. Uh, for now, I'll just minimize this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll double click this guy just to be sure that we're referencing the one from the desktop. We can actually close out of that other one. All right, actually, we'll go here and don't save. All right, so now we're looking at the dsdt.dsl file from the desktop. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look for DTGP. And go ahead and click that search button. As you can see here, it can't find the word. That means we have an edit to do if it can't find that. If yours is found, then you can skip this part of the tutorial. So we're going to click OK. And if you need to do the edit, that's where this other folder comes in handy, that add HDEF to DSDT. What we're going to do is open this right here. And it'll open up another window. And this whole part right here, from this method all the way down to after it says return zero, this last little curly brace, what you want to do is copy that to your clipboard. So we can right click and click copy. And now go back over to the DSDT that we're referencing from the desktop. And somewhere after this definition block curly brace, this opening curly brace, you want to go in and return down. I like to do it twice just so it's a little bit easier on your eyes to read. And what you're going to do is paste. And I would just I would do another return just to keep things nice and neat. And now the first part is done. It's just a simple copy and paste. Now what we have to do is search for something else. And this time we're going to search for HDEF. Once again, search. And as usual, this did not come up. Now if this comes up, then I'm not really sure why you're doing this tutorial. You really shouldn't have any problems. So I'm going to assume that you also cannot find this word. What we have to do now is come back to this one, which is that DSL from the add HDEF to DSDT folder. And we're going to scroll down. And this right here, this device HDEF, you know, the HDF in uh, parentheses here, we're going to copy that all the way down to the second curly brace right there. Right click and copy. And now once that's copied, we're going to come back to here. And here we're going to type PEX0 and we're going to search for that. 
Now that will come up. And now so find where it came up and you're gonna you know return down once or twice and come back up here and paste what we just copied. Now if you search for PEX0 and nothing came up, what you wanna do is search for 0x00, 0, 0, 0, 1c, and then four more zeros. And then go ahead and search for that. And now if you if you find that but you don't find the PEX0, then simply do what we just did. Just copy and paste that of that line of code from over here right before it. But since we found that just fine, we're gonna come back up here. Now this right here is what you have to edit. This is different for every audio chipset. And to get, you know, kind of like a guide for this, in this file here, scroll down here, and here's all the different little hex keys that you need. If you have an 885 chipset, you need to use these guys right here. If you have an 887, you need to use these guys here, et cetera, et cetera. I have an 898, so what I'm gonna do is use this one right here, this set of digits here. So I'm gonna highlight that, and replace it. So mine for 898 is 0x82, 0x03, 0x00, 0x00. And now once you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and compile it. And right here, you see we do have a success, and it'll actually bring up that folder again, and now we have a usable DSDT. So I'm gonna close out of these folders just to you know reduce some clutter here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do now is don't actually install this yet. Don't go to UniBeast and do the user DSDT install because if something is wrong with this, you could mess up your system and have to do a fresh installation and do this all over again. So what I recommend doing is just copying it to the desktop and do nothing more with it. We're gonna reboot the system and we're gonna type in a kernel flag and actually use this DSDT. And if it boots, then we can actually install it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here we are at the bootloader screen and the kernel flag to test out the DSDT is DSDT equals desktop with a capital D, very important, slash DSDT.aml. And just to see if we have any errors, we'll throw in a dash V for a verbose boot. Now with those kernel flags in place, we're just going to hit enter. And of course, after a few seconds, our system will boot up perfectly, even when using that edited DSDT. So now that we verified that the DSDT does in fact work and get a clean boot, what we're gonna do now is run MultiBeast and actually install it. So we'll come down here, MultiBeast. We're gonna click through. And as you could have guessed, we're gonna do the user DSDT or DSDT free installation, in which case it'll use this DSDT.aml on the desktop that we just created. Now keep in mind that once we do this, this will change a few things on your system. So for people like me that are right now using a socket 2011 system, or maybe whatever system just isn't that compatible, this will change your boot.plist file. So we'll have to go in and edit that in a second here. And so along with this, I'm gonna have to come down here, drivers, miscellaneous, and I'm gonna have to install null CPU power management. You may not have to do this depending on your system. If you have a CPU that has native power management, then you won't need to do this. But like I said, for me, I will have to do this. Otherwise, I won't be able to boot. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue, install, put in that extremely secure password of yours, and wait for it to finish. And now that, that was successful, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the extra folder of the main drive here. We're gonna edit the org.chameleon.boot.plist. And like I said, it did change a few things. For me, I'm using an NVIDIA GPU, which means my graphics enabler should be switched back to no. My kernel flags are missing, in which case I need NPCI equals 0x3000. And for this processor, I also have to change the identification. But that looks to be it, so I'm gonna save that. Make sure my SM BIOS is all good. So basically what I'm doing here is fixing things that the user DSDT install changed back to its defaults. And the last thing I'm gonna do is install the 898 audio codec. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Kext Beast. And right here I have the actual uh, kernel extension for the audio right here. I'm gonna copy that to my desktop. And now Kext Beast, all I have to do is hit continue, continue, install. And now it's gonna place that Kext right where it should be. I'm gonna reboot and we're gonna cross our fingers. Now here we are after the reboot. And as you can see up here, we actually have some audio settings. I'm gonna hold the Alt key and that'll give me to all my various outputs here. And this is the first test right here. I'm gonna see if I have audio. Voila, as you can hear, audio seems to be working just fine. Now I will say that if you plan to use an audio interface, like an external interface, there's even some cheap USB solutions that cost no more than 10 or $12, then you can do that without having to go through all this stuff. But if you wanna use the onboard audio from your motherboard and MultiBeast isn't doing it for you, then I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out roachtechnology.com and I hope to see you back on my channel very soon.